So for example, believing that everything's going great even when it's not can boost your morale. Well, it, it's strategically useful if you're in a society of people who communicate and, and have these things in common, because a lot of the reality which we create is, is created by our own interactions with each other. Like my, me and the Ghanaians in the forest, we, we, we created a system. Um, and we all had beliefs about it. I mean, my belief was that, that, that you know, this was some crazy movie that I'd got myself into and couldn't get out of. And um, one of the girls from, from uh, on the third last night, we met some Venezuelans, and, and, and one of the girls just gave me an analysis of, of the popularity of Barack Obama as the president of the United States. She said, you know, the survey had been done. He's, he's president number A1. The oh, fucking hell is this is a um how the hell did this girl from Venezuela turn up here to 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 preach Barack Obama's superior presidency to me? I went mad. I went and lay down and far away from them just to to not have to hear that. I was furious. I left them to to eat the last can of food that was there. So, I mean, Barack, I'm sorry, but, you know, all I hear from you is, is through bumper sticker on the Francis car. Well, that's enough. I mean, I trust you. Go for it. Um, psychologists call this a psychological immune system. Believing that you have various positive qualities even when you don't, like believing that you're you know, brave and trustworthy and virtuous and competent, um, can be a useful way to impress or persuade other people, right? Uh, if you can act like you're a good leader or a good mate, um, even if you're not, um, and you really believe that, you're going to be more persuasive to other people in your tribe, um, even if it's not true. Those are just a couple of the ways in which it seems like believing false things could have been adaptive. Now, my position is that even though soldier mode seems to have been useful for our ancestors, it's actually net harmful for us now in the modern world. Um, so we can, you can, you can carry on. It's, it's a great talk. You can carry on listening to it, but my phone is now filling up. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to, to run to the end until the phone stops recording. And that we would be better off if we could switch away from soldier mode and into scout mode more often. So here's one reason that I think this. Your genes are short-sighted. You're already familiar with this phenomenon in other contexts. For example, when you're thinking about what you'd prefer to do tomorrow night and you're choosing between staying in and watching Netflix or going to the gym, you often decide, oh, go to the gym. No, Netflix is great, but like, the gym's a healthier choice. I'll feel better about myself afterwards. But then when the choice is tonight, Netflix or the gym tonight, well, the gym can wait another day. So there's just... This interesting I didn't used to have that problem with the gym. No, the other problem. Um, and the inconsistency is unbalanced in a way that uh, prioritizes immediate rewards over over immediate costs and delayed rewards. The technical term for this, uh, instead of short sightedness, is hyperbolic discounting. Um, we don't know for sure why humans evolved this way. The most common theory is that it's a response to the inherent uncertainty of our ancestors' lives. You know, when you could a week from now get eaten by a predator or died from an untreated infection, maybe it really was rational to eat dessert first and just you know, consume all the resources you could instead of planning for the long term. Um, and since our brains evolved in that world, it's hard for us now to motivate ourselves to do things that incur a short-term cost in exchange for a long-term benefit. Um, we don't know. That's you know, a plausible story. Um, but the existence of the phenomenon is pretty clear. And I think soldier mode fits the same pattern of short-term uh, benefits in exchange for longer term, bigger costs. So, for example, if you've ever been running late um, and you have to call your friend or text your friend to say, sorry, I'm running late, I'll be there in blank minutes, you might notice that your brain really wants to fill in that blank with an optimistic number because um, you just, like, you know you'll, your friend will be like a little irritated if you say 25 minutes, so you kind of optimistically say 10 minutes, really like believe you can make it in 10. But of course, this is a very short term benefit. Um, when you end up being 25 minutes late, your friend will be more annoyed than if you had just said 25 minutes up front. So you're just trading off a happy friend now for an even unhappier friend a little bit later. 
I don't know about all that stuff. But, uh, yeah. Wow, Julia. God, I love you. God, I love you. You've saved my life so many times. I hope we get to meet one day. I really do.